in this video I'll be showing you how um, basically a derivation how they went from the first principles of the derivative to basically the power rule for differentiating any polynomial so I've made tons of videos on the channel basically deriving what the derivative is in the first principle but I've never made the basically the interlink how they went from this to that so what this basically means is if you differentiate a polynomial with x to the n all you have to do is move the n down the front and subtract the power by 1 and you get basically its derivative, okay? So this is if you had y equals x to the n, then therefore um, dy dx is equal to n to the x, um, n, mi n multiplied by x to the power of n minus 1, okay? Now you can find the derivative of the exact same thing using um, first principles. So for this, this isn't really a video on problems, it's basically kind of like a proof. But, but to make this proof, we need to accept that the binomial theorem is true. So recall, the binomial theorem basically give us, it gives us an expression for expanding a polynomial. So if we had, let's say, um, x plus 1 all squared, that's equivalent to x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1, okay? And of course, you use the FOIL method to expand that, and that would be equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1, okay? Samely, if we had, let's say, uh, x plus, uh, let's say, um, let's just keep, say, 2 um, cubed, that would be x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2, okay? Distributing that out, that'd be x squared plus 4x plus 4 multiplied by x plus 2, okay? And that would be equal to x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x plus 2x squared plus 8x plus 8. And that would simplify to x cubed plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. Okay? So basically we can expand our brackets and turn them into these big polynomials, right? So the binomial theorem is basically a general expression for expanding something like that, like an algebraic term, like x squared plus 1, or, um, x plus 1 or squared. And it doesn't have to be um, basically a linear thing either. It doesn't just have to be x. It could be x squared inside the brackets all to the power of 3. Okay? So the way we write um, the bino binomial theorem is kind of like this. So we, if we have um, x plus y all to the n, what would the algebraic expression, the general expression, be for that? Okay, so n is any discrete whole number, pretty much. So it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And x and y are just variables in this case. Okay, you could replace them for constants and you get the exact same thing. So basically, the binomial theorem basically says this whole thing is equal to um, x to the power of n plus n choose 1 multiplied by x to the n minus 1 multiplied by y plus n choose 2 multiplied by x to the n minus 2 multiplied by y um, to the power of uh, 2 plus dot 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 plus n choose r multiplied by x to the n minus r multiplied by y to the r plus y to the power of n. Okay. Now what are these things here? Now, if we simplify these things, these turn into the coefficients of our, our terms of our polynomial. So, what does this whole thing here mean? Basically, this means this comes from common, common mctorics, pretty much. So, when you have a combination of something. So, what this basically means, I'm just going to choose this example here. So, if you have n choose r, that's basically equal to um, n factorial divided by r factorial over n minus r factorial. Okay, that's the formula for its um ncr that's another way they can write it so basically this whole thing comes from pascal's triangle okay now i'm not going to simplify this term or this term here because you'll see why later we, it doesn't really matter but i am going to simplify this front term here so if we have n choose one okay that's basically saying um if you were to break n up into one group how many group um, five, two, yeah, never mind. So this whole thing is just going to be equal to n factorial over one factorial over n minus one factorial. Okay. Now, 
what does factorial actually mean? So factorial means if you have like five factorial, that means basically the product of the numbers ascending after this number. So what that means is if you have five factorial is equal to five multiplied by four, multiplied by three, multiplied by two, multiplied by one. It always gets down to here. Okay. It always follows um, a pattern. It's always the number after the next. So notice how four comes after five and then three comes after four. It goes all the way down. You could have, if we had um, 10 factorial, it'd be equal to 10 multiplied by nine, dot, 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 multiplied by three, multiplied by two, multiplied by one, okay? So if we have, let's say n factorial, which we have here on the denominator of this fraction, okay? So n factorial, would be equal to this number, multiplied by the number after that, which be n minus 1, multiplied by the number after that, etc, etc, and that go down to multiply by 1. But what we can actually do here is basically, we can simplify this whole thing here and just say, isn't that whole thing, isn't n factorial just equal to n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial? So I'll give you another example. If we had 5 factorial again, that would just be equal to 5 multiplied by 4 factorial, okay? So notice how we've basically done this here. It's basically, the, they are the same thing, okay? So the reason we've done that is because you notice this little expression here is on the bottom here. So we can actually cancel that to make our um, work out our coefficient. So all I'm going to do is just move this to the side real quick. And just rewrite this. So n factorial is equal to n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial. Um, 1 factorial is just 1. So we can just leave the bottom as n minus 1 factorial. And you notice top, bottom, we can cancel them out. Okay. So if we have n choose 1, that's just equal to n. Okay. So we can replace this coefficient here as just n. Okay. And now let's get rid of that. Now, you're probably wondering, why do we need the binomial theorem to prove the power rule? Okay. Well, it always, it comes down to basically this term here, when you have f of x plus h. Okay. So let's just say, right, let's start our actual proof now, now that we've established bits of the binomial theorem that we actually need. Let's just start our proof. So let's just say the most basic polynomial that we're trying to prove. f of x is equal to x to the power of n. Okay, therefore, f of x plus h is equal to x plus h all to the n. And this is where the binomial theorem comes in, okay? So, how could we write this whole thing in terms of the binomial theorem? So, all we would need to do is write out this whole thing here, just replace y with h. So, therefore x plus h all to the n is equal to x to the n multiplied by n over x minus 1 multiplied by h plus n choose 2 multiplied by x to the n minus 2 multiplied by um, h squared plus dot 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 plus n to the r over x minus x to the power of n minus r multiplied by h r plus h to the n, okay? Now this r basically means any general number, okay? Because this list could go on forever. We're just going to say um, r is the last term in our um, polynomial expansion, okay? So this would be like uh, the very last coefficient, okay? With the lowest degree, okay? So how does this help us, all right? So let's just write out uh, um, the first principles. So if we have the limit as h, goes to 0 over f of x plus h minus f of x over h. That's going to give us the instantaneous gradient at any point, otherwise known as um, the derivative, okay, or the gradient function. So this whole thing, let me just get rid of this. This whole thing here is going to be equal to f dash of x, okay? Now all we got to do is basically substitute this and this into our little formula here, okay? Or our theorem, the basic definition of a gradient at, instant at any point. So let's just do that. So we'll go f dash of x is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of 
this whole, I'm going to write the whole binomial theorem, um, the whole expansion in here. So we're going to have x to the n plus n multiplied by x to the power of n minus 1, h plus n choose 2 over x to the n minus 2, h squared plus dot 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 plus n choose r multiplied by x to the power of n minus r, h to the r plus h to the n minus f of x, which is x to the n, divided by h. Alright, now I'm just going to move this, I'm going to make this a bit smaller and move that there. I'm just going to move this upwards and make it just a tiny bit smaller so we have enough room to finish this. Okay, so obviously you would have noticed we have x to the n here and we have negative x to the n here. So therefore those can cancel out. So all we're going to do is just rub those out. And just make our divide a bit smaller. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions at all in this video, please leave some in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Now notice every single term has a h. So therefore we can take out a common factor of h. Because if we apply this limit to this whole thing here, we're going to have basically 0 divided by 0. Now we know that's not going to be true, but we can change how it looks, okay? So basically we can get rid of the 0 divided by 0 by taking out the factor of h on the denominator and cancelling with the h on the... Um, uh, we can take out the h on the numerator and cancel it with the h on the denominator, okay? So, we can take out a h out of here, out of here, out of here, and out of here, okay? An infinite amount of terms, all right? So, that's what we're going to do. So, we're going to rewrite it. So, f dash of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 over h multiplied by n to the, multiplied by x to the n minus 1 plus n choose 2, x to the power of n minus 2, h, because this was h squared and took out a h, so it's going to be h, and so on and so forth. That's going to happen to every single term. So we're going to have dot, 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 plus n choose r, x to the n minus r, h to the power of r minus 1, because we took out a h, plus h to the n minus 1. Okay? And then we can cancel the h's. So all we're left with is basically f dash of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 over, multi um, basically this limit applies to this expression here. n multiplied by x to the n minus 1 plus n choose 2, x to the power of, oh, whoopsie daisy, my computer's lagging, x to the power of n minus 2 plus h, multiplied by h plus dot 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 every term, and choose r, x to the power of n minus r, multiplied by h to the power of r minus 1, plus h to the n minus 1, okay? If we apply this limit, this term isn't going to change. But as h goes to 0, this term here is going to go to 0, this term is going to go to 0, this term is going to go to 0, and this term is going to go to 0. So what we're left with when we apply that limit is basically f dash of x is equal to n multiplied by x to the power of n minus 1, where f of x is equal to x to the n. Therefore, the derivative of x to the n, you just bring the n down the front and minus the power by 1. Boom. How's that for a proof? All right. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions or anything, um, leave some in the comments. If you like this video, um, subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See ya.